welcome back. Welcome back after summer. I guess I'm talking to myself because I was uh, we were in recess until yesterday. It was our first meeting. Um, anyway, let's get started. I'd like to call to order the uh, Whatcom County Incarceration Prevention and Reduction Task Force Steering Committee meeting for September 11th, 2024. Uh, it's 1 p.m. and we're meeting virtually uh, and welcome everyone. Uh, before we begin, we acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional and unceded territory of the Lummi, Nooksack, Samish, and Samiamu people who have cared for and tended this land since time immemorial. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We begin this effort to acknowledge what has been buried by honoring the truth. We pay respect to their elders, past and present. Please take a moment to consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together here today. And please join us in uncovering such truths at any and all public events. So again, welcome. Uh, we have Holly and Marty here with us today. That's exciting. So um, our first item of business is the IPTRF review and co-chair recommendations. And this is something Peter and Heather brought uh, last meeting and we had a discussion and we decided to carry it over till today. So I'm going to let uh, our co-chairs kick it off and uh, we'll uh, we'll see what what we have to hear. It's, Peter, Heather. Peter, do you want to start it? Uh, sure. And I'm going to start by um, thanking Jenna because her note taking, I, I just want you guys to know that if you are needing any information about any past meeting, uh, the work that she does in, um, in observing and taking notes in those meetings is uh, stellar. And uh, it, uh, saved me hours and hours of work in going through videos uh, of countless meetings uh, to capture uh, the work that we did and the work that we, and so thank you, John, uh, it's fantastic. Um, oh, well, let's see, we've been co-chairs maybe for six months. Um, through that time, we have been meeting with all the uh, uh, committees and asking for feedback, um, led a process in, in many of those meetings. Um, we have asked questions of the county council. We have talked to a, a number of um, uh, key uh, staff of the of Whatcom County um, to uh, uh, to review um, and. Uh, understand how that um, IPRTF can do a better job uh, to uh, what sort of reformations need to happen, what sort of uh, focus needs to happen. Um, and you've all been part of this process, and I, I really want to thank you very much for that. Um, we went ahead and uh, came up with our findings, uh, which hopefully you've had a chance to read. Uh, we've made some recommendations and today um, we've asked uh, Holly to take us through a process where we will um, get your very important feedback upon uh, the work that we have done. And Heather, what would you like to um, add? I think, can you hear me okay? Is it, does it um, make a tinny sound on your end? Okay, good. I think my speakers need a little update on my end. Um, uh, your woofers are tweeting maybe, huh? It yeah, sounds maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I would add to is that uh, I'm excited to go through this report. I hope Holly and Marty will help us all walk through it together. Jill, I think, put together a really nice agenda of wanting to get some consensus and appro formal approval of mine and Peter's co-chair priorities that we've been sharing with committees, just as a transparency mechanism to be able to say, like, this is where we're coming from. This is what we're oriented to. Um, and then the categories that the recommendations fall into. Um, 
And, and then the next steps for how committees can work on advancing some of these different recommendations. Um, what I would add is that nothing in this report should be new to you, really, that these are conversations and reflections back of what a lot of other people have been saying. Um, and so this is really a function as well of I think it's very important when we do these kind of even mini listening tours to have the moment to say, here's what we heard. Did we hear you right? Yeah. This information isn't just going into a vacuum somewhere that we will use this moving forward. So it's kind of that pause, reflection back. Did we get it right? And how do we move forward based on these recommendations? So um, I'm excited, Holly and Marty, for your help with our group going through all of this. And uh, awesome. before uh, Holly begins um, taking us through this, I just wanted to say that the important that work that we did in our last IPRTF meeting, which is going to need to uh, uh, continue into the probably the next two meetings, uh, should be uh, harmonized with what we come up with here in uh, these recommendations, what we hear from you, and then ultimately we would really like to uh, lead a process to uh, have an 18-month work plan for committees and for the IPRTF in general with uh, priorities so that we can all together co-create uh, the next 18 months. And, um, and so we know where we're going and uh, what actions we can take. And it's all towards, um, you know, doing what it, uh, advisory group does, uh, which is to make decisions, to uh, make recommendations to uh, our our council. And so that is our intention. And we're just hoping that this process is a good one. So take it away, Holly. Right. Okay. So the way that um, I'm understanding in how we're going to proceed today after a brief conversation with Peter yesterday is that I'm just going to put on the screen each page and that will be the time for people to ask questions and also to give input. And our objective as Heather stated is to see if we're in unity. So if the unit, my understanding is what we're hoping today is if the steering committee is in unity on this stuff, or we're working to get to unity, that'll really support Heather and Peter in their work. Correct? I got it right? Okay. Yes. So I, I encourage people, yeah, to be really straightforward uh, in their comments. And also, if, if something's not working, then we'll talk about what, what will work better. So uh, let's see. I think I should be able to... Does that make sense, everybody, before we start? Just page at a time? Yeah? Okay. All right. So here we are. And you'll notice here at the top are the priorities for the IPRTF from the co-chair's recommendations. So there's six priorities that are being offered. And then, um, you know, four areas in which we want to think about how we're organizing our work. So I wonder if it would be helpful just to start with the priorities. When you guys look at these, the six priorities, and you'll see them embedded in the rest of the document, is there anything here that, that you have questions about or seems like we need more discussion? Okay, so I'm gonna assume then, hearing, hearing nothing, that there is alignment on that, on these goals. And then let's go ahead and just see if the different areas of focus make sense to everybody. So those are the communication opportunities, the policy and advocacy opportunities, the IPRTF focus area recommendations for agendas, committees, and actions, right? Which is kind of like what 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 do we need to focus on most in this coming, say, 18 months, like Peter said, and then some structural recommendations. So is there any general questions? Because we're going to start digging into each one of these, but d does the framework make sense? Is there anything that, that you want to flag for discussion right now? I'm going to do a check. 
how many people here have read the document? Raise your hand. Are you prepared? Okay. A little bit, Raylene, you've scanned? Because we can I, slow down if we need to. I scanned it, but I literally just got home. So I've been out of the area. So I'm I'm catching up, but I'll catch up quickly, I promise. So, okay. And Tank and Kayla, are you guys good? Or do you need more time as we go through? I have some questions about this, but if we want to dive in deeper later, we I, I don't know when the right time to ask is. Why don't you start with your questions now so we get those answered before we get any deeper? And yeah. Tank, and did you, you have do, and before you do, I'm so sorry. I just got a text from Dan Hamill asking to be um made a panelist, and I don't know how to do that. Is that something, Jill, you could do? Oh, it just happened. Magic. Okay, great. Okay. Yay. Okay, Thank Dan's you. here. And sorry. Then, I'm sorry. sorry to interrupt. No, we that's the right kind of interruption. Um, Tank, where are you at? Did you get a chance to look at this stuff in advance or are you are you doing it as we go? Right now I'm doing it as as we go. Uh, my apologies, but I've been uh, as most people have been busy, but uh, I've been extremely busy last uh, last couple of weeks. All good. Yeah, this just helps so I, we can make sure that everybody's here together. Dan, did you get a chance to review this doc before mm -hmm. today? Yeah, I'm on board 100%. Okay, sweet. Okay, so uh, it seems like it'd be good then uh, to hear from Kayla. You had some general questions. Do you want to jump in? Yeah, I was just, look, I mean, I, as I'm walking through some of the supplementary tables and stuff, I'm seeing some sort of good focus across the board. But when I look at the focus area recommendations, like it seems very focused on behavioral health and less so on the legal and justice side. In this, like in the table, IPRTF focus area recommendations for agendas, committees, and actions. And I think you've all heard me say this a number of times, but like, I, I think there's some places there, particularly on the behavioral care center where like work hasn't quite begun on the county side and there's a lot of program development work that will be helpful to have from the IPRTF. But for some of these behavioral health areas, for example, like Medicaid benefits for incarcerated individuals, I don't know sort of what the IPRTF anticipates doing there because it feels much like okay, the county has a $2 million contract. We need to figure out how to build Medicaid. And like, it's sort of like very much on the implementation side in the lack of county staff. Um, whereas sort of the policy work around criminal justice reform, how do we design the behavioral care center feels much more sort of in the IPRTFs. Like it's a place where we need to, like the IPRTF makes recommendations to the county council. Those are places we need recommendations to the county council. We don't need recommendations necessarily to the county council about like how we set up Medicaid billing under our existing contract with the HCA. We need to just put our heads down and do that work. Oh, Dan, you have your hand raised. I was going to add something too, but maybe you go first. Yeah, I just think that to Kayla's point, I think that we need some kind of de delineation on and re kind of like refocusing in on what the task force's role and roles would be for any of these items here. And then what the what the staff's roles would be, whether it's um, county health department or, you know, executive's office. We we have not been very um, uh, deliberate in that um, over the past um, year or so. And I think that we just need to refocus in here. That's it. If I could Thanks. just orient yeah. too briefly, Holly, I'm sorry. Um, the yeah. There's the Please. four four category areas, these, so communications, policy advocacy, and then focus area recommendations for agendas slash committees slash action, and then structural recommendations around process and function. The bullet points in these boxes are kind of like the executive summary. These were the, this is what different task force members and occasionally um, a county council person or an administrative um, teammate said. So this is a reflection back. This is not mine and Peter's list of ideas. This is a reflection back of what was said. And then when you go to the tables, 
they're structured with the highlight and opportunity being what somebody like the kind of the headline of what people were saying, where it might correspond to either one of mine and Peter's goals or to the RCW or to an implementation plan in that first column, just so there's kind of that crosswalk of like, where could this live or supporting documentation. That second column is excerpts of people's comments, right? What the feedback was from people. And then the proposed next steps is what Peter and I drafted in response to those comments. Those are very draft form. And even as I'm reading through this document, there's some formatting and consistency things that I'd love to go back and just tweak a little bit. But um, so I think that that proposed next steps box will be really a great place for us to have those conversations about like, what is that balance of behavioral health? And is it really that we're creating policy recommendations or that we're just learning and receiving information at appropriate times so that we're aware and can participate at the right level? Um, and so just a little orientation to that document too. That's Peter. super helpful, Heather. Okay. Great. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, one other note is that um, Jill has done an excellent job of um, um, putting her, and I don't think they made it into this document, but she took the time to go through it all, and she's given us uh, extensive notes, and they're fantastic. We're going to be rolling that back in once we get your, I'm speaking to everybody on the screen here, your comments as well. And so, um, yeah, we have a process started. And thanks to Jill for her work. All right. Okay, so that's really helpful to clarify that the, these categories, like they gathered input, you've got basically four categories that have emerged, and these are the ideas that were offered or a summary of the ideas. And then we're going to go into deeper, like what do we do with those ideas from that feedback? Kayla, that is that helpful? Okay. Any other questions before we move into the to the meat? Okay. And thank you, Heather, for describing how it's organized. I think that was really, really valuable. Okay, here we are with the first one, which is communications. So these are divided into the two main areas of opportunity regarding communication communications. And you can see here what they are communicate it with the public about progress and impact and focus on improving communication and coordination between organizations. And then actually there's a third as well, create communication feedback loops with staff and council. So Heather and Peter, where do you, I mean, we could just in general, what questions or comments do people have? And then we can That's dial in where specifics are. Mm -hmm. If it's helpful too, I know sometimes I read different than I hear. If it's helpful, I can just summarize quickly too the what each category says really quick. Um, so community because we have yeah do that because we have different people <laughs> who are so just fast. coming in fresh right yeah um, that first one communicate with the public about progress and impact. That's something we've all that's not new right. Um, and then some proposed next steps, we're working with the county staff to understand the budget, um, consider working for that communications. I think that work's already underway, actually. Um, consider working with the consultant and or understand what staff time is currently allocated to provide those communications. Um, also, talking about understanding where we as IPRTF can support with individual or collective actions, like for example, hosting a periodic town hall in partnership with county council. That's been something we've done in the past. Um, or if there's help we can give with drafting um, newsletter blurbs or social media messaging or blog dates and posts and things like that. The second communications category was um, like the inter, the cross sector communications opportunities, not just the outward public ones. Um, and I think that's actually a really key reason for why the task force was developed. And um, one of the assets, right, is that across silo communications, um, 
with the different departments. And so we said some proposed next steps could be work to ensure that issues are addressed holistically at the task force by inviting affected parties, lived experience, decision makers across departments and programs to speak to appropriate agenda items. And so that could look like when we have the agenda, you know, if it takes some of us calling to make sure that, oh, this topic needs the Washington State Patrol because it deals with DUIs and they're the biggest arrester of that, right? Like making sure they know that and are there for that relevant topic, um, et cetera. And then we added this create communication feedback loops with staff and council into the communication strategy, even though you could also argue it's structural. Um, and, and some of the next steps and ideas there were just calendaring out the regular updates on work streams to centralize IPRTF reporting um, from staff. So if we had like a calendar of agenda items, knowing that, okay, we're gonna talk about the Behavioral Care Center, we're gonna expect an update in six months, then staff can plan for that instead of, you know, every week it might be a different request, right? Um, and then track requests and ongoing work through a point person to ensure streamlined communications and follow through. I've been assuming that could be Jill and Jill already acts as the air traffic controller, I think for us, but just having that kind of formalized and a, um, like a norm that if task force members want something on an agenda, it has to go through Jill and there's a repository for that kind of thing. So that's a quick summary of the communications categories. I did not read through the different comments as you saw, um, but I'll give you a second to look at those two. And just to remind everybody, we have a lot of content to get through. So I think having he this will work well to have Heather kind of give us an overview and then we jump right in and then just keep moving and moving along. So Marty, your hands up and then Bertie. Um, I This seems like it could be a good place to mention data dashboards as a vehicle for communicating about progress to the public. It, this is going to be in the future, but I'd really love to see data dashboards be a very um, well-publicized source for information about progress on implementation plan projects. Great. Thank you. Bertie? Yes, this is a quick comment. I don't want to lead us too far astray, but when I looked at this communication and feedback, I saw another uh, small loop that I think would help folks like me who are chairs of some of those committees. I find that there's so much work going on in so many different places that to use myself as an example of the index um, subcommittee, it's really hard for me to keep track of what's happening. And I think I'm not alone in that. You know, the implementation plan does things. The exec committee does things. Um, and so it might be helpful to have some point situation um, for that as well. And I don't, because I tend not to reach out and ask because everybody's way too busy and I might not even be asking the right person. But I think internally, having a communication feedback system uh, around key issues might be helpful and establishing who that contact person would be. I think, Bertie, um, that's one, one piece of what we were trying to do with the justice implementation plan conversation at the last full meeting. But there's also that whole chunk of what else is going on that isn't in that implementation plan. So message well received. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Marie, did you have another comment? Your hand still is up. Okay, so you can take down your hand. Okay, anything else people would like to add or have questions about? Just a quick comment. When we're looking at making sure that we have like data dashboards up there in visual and transparent, I think what I need to make sure that is we have direction, what data from what areas, what, what specifics are you looking for? Are you looking for recidivism rates? 
Are you looking for recidivism rates with mental health court, with courts that we're not doing, that we want to try at different treatment options? I, I mean, I think if we're going to have those data dashboards, we need to be able to, to really hone that into what specifics are you looking for that is gonna help the people understand the process. Yep, Barry? Yeah, I just wanted to build off what Raylene just said. And I think one thing that's important is we need to understand what, what is available too. I mean, you just named off a few things that I don't know that I would have thought of. So um, we need to know what we don't know, I guess, about from the different data sources, you know, what kind of delineations are there done in the data? What kind of what kind of uh, things are being tracked within those data collection agencies? Because we don't always know what to ask for. We have a rough idea from our work. But, you know, if we find there's a report that's super interesting, interesting and, and the group will benefit from it the data actually exists yeah thanks Mara, did you want to give a little update there sure so these are really excellent comments and um we you know holly and i are just re-entering this work but that's one of the first steps is to bring together people who can really start addressing these questions what data is there that is directly relevant to these implementation plan projects and can we get it and how can we bring it together and how can we then present it? So it'll be a kind of a lengthy process of selecting those indicators, but we're eager to get started and have an initial meeting planned for the end of this month to start that conversation. And I think we talked at our last IPRTF meeting about like kind of everybody's involvement with that and especially the role of the J-pop relative to that. Yeah, Tank? Yeah, I just want to mention that as we go through this process and we look at different systems and people that can contribute to trying to figure out some of this data, it occurs to me unless I'm wrong, that we don't have any representation from Department of Corrections, and I'm talking about the Washington State Department of Corrections. And I know that uh, as we try to, you know, look at alternatives for incarceration, um, that's a big piece of it. So just wanted to throw that out there. Right. So noted, thank you. Jill? Thanks, um, in responding to Sheriff Tank, I just wanted to let you know that Eric Peterson with the State Department of Corrections is an IPRTF member and he has been regularly attending. Um, we don't hear from him a lot, but he's there and um, he's um, communicated to me that he's willing to participate however, however we need him. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. Appreciate that. Okay, so if we can wind this up pretty soon, we've got communications, we've got the importance of the data dashboard, ways to keep track and keep people informed about what else is going on. And Dan, you're up. Yeah, I just real quick wanted to respond to, uh, to uh, Sheriff Tank. Uh, at the next behavioral health um, and legal and justice systems meeting, there'll be a, a brief presentation from Lisa Marks who's a re-entry uh, person um, for uh, pre-apprenticeship programs. And she works within the Department of Correct Corrections, but she's not a, a DOC employee. She's a, um, actually a, a member of a carpenter's union, but they they work towards getting folks that are re-entering society into these um, these programs. And so there, there will be an opportunity to learn a little bit more about that on the 17th. Thank you, fantastic. Thank you. You guys ready? Seems good. Seems like we've got alignment with some good additions. So let's move on. Policy and advocacy. Heather, you want to give us a brief overview? Yes. So um, there were two main uh, pieces of feedback around policy and advocacy. 
Um, so the first is, uh, I hope to Kayla's delight, focus on criminal and legal system <laughs> justice reform policy. And, um, and so some proposed next steps, and these aren't necessarily exhaustive, right? We would love your thoughts on next steps too. This is sometimes Heather at 1 a.m. incoherently putting things in a table when I can't sleep. So your thoughts are extremely welcome. Um, but uh, consider citizen or policymaker co-chair for the Legal and Justice Subcommittee was one thoughtful next step. And then creating an ongoing feedback loop between County Council and IPRTF through monitoring of council agendas and ensuring input is provided on relevant agenda items. So that feedback loop of what is council talking about that IPRTF can also be kind of watching and saying, oh gosh, council's got this re-entry contract coming up. Is there a spot for us to weigh in on that? Or do we, you know, can we be helpful in some way? Um, and through co-chair slash council member periodic one-on-ones to identify the local, state, and federal policy opportunities. I'm sure there are quite a few more other next steps that could go in that category because it's a pretty big one. Um, the second one is generally using our influence and in elevating recommendations. We received some um, feedback about, you know, it's one thing for policymakers or for task forces to talk about reforms or ideas, and then it's another for it to go from leadership all the way down to frontline staff and how can we be supportive in appropriate ways with um, culture shifting where needed. Um, so how can I, we can support individual IPRTF members in their sphere of influence and relationships through providing good data, accurate and timely reports from the county and helpful information generally, because each of us also operate in our own spheres, right? So what are the tools we can give the task force members so that they can be advancing the good work? Right. Thank you. So comments, questions on this one? I'll bring it back up here. So policy and advocacy. Okay, sound good? Just a real quick really? comment on that, Holly. I just wanted to mention, I believe um, Judge Terry Lewis is retiring from Linden um, coming up at the end of the month. And I believe um, Will Wisdom will be appointed as the new judge as he retires. So that's another change to the small cities. And so I think we wanna go back to the small cities again and revisit some of those areas to see if there's other individuals that would be interested in participating so we can get more information from those different areas. Um, but I know, you know, things keep changing in all the different areas, so it doesn't hurt to revisit th those areas. I'll also be talking um, to um, probably start follows again uh, later on this week about assisting in the co-chair role. Great, thank you. Seems like another communication thing, right? As people are changing positions, <laughs> keeping abreast of that. Yeah, Barry? So I'm, I was wondering in your conversations around, especially the advocacy side of this, did you have any um, thoughts on on legislative agendas and how we advocate to the state um, and how that process might look like for discussion with the IPTRF? Um, I would love to add that in. We have it as sort of a comma in that ongoing feedback loop between council and IPRTF. At the end, we say um, having those one-on-ones with council members to identify local, state, and federal policy opportunities. But I like how you're saying it better because it, it's a little more organized and task force directed versus co-chair directed. And I'd love to hear more about how you would write that in as a proposed next step. Yeah, I'll think about it. I think it needs to have more than just be a part of a serial sentence and, and a, right. one of the elements. So I think it needs to stand out a little more. Okay. Great. Okay. Good. Should we move on? Okay. Sounds good. So we'll clean that up. 
And moving on now to the focus area recommendations for agendas, committees, and action. So Heather, you want to give us an and overview? Peter, here? feel free to also, if you feel like you want to talk for a while, you're more than welcome to. Um, this chunk was by, by far the largest um, where we received the most feedback and thoughts. And I also would like to say that just because a task force member said something doesn't necessarily mean we have to act on it. So these are, again, just like opportunities. And we would like to come to consensus about how would we space these kinds of actions or opportunities out over the next 18 months and pace it and prioritize it and come to agreement on what goes first, what goes second, et cetera. Um, so because it's the biggest area, I might pause every two or three to let you weigh in. Um, so we have IPRTF should maintain the needs assessment gap documentation and SIM priorities. Um, a proposed next step could be that we agree to review, review the needs assessment gap and sequential intercept priorities at, at least annually or through some coordinated process in partnership with county staff who can fill in that information, but that it's scheduled and a regular update. Um, and we could just pick a date to do it the first time, right? I put November, 2024. I look at that it's September 11th today um, and think November is really quick. So maybe it's February of 2025, right? Um, monitor progress on the implementation plan projects and the funding. Um, and that's another big one. And we've started that process, right? At the last task force meeting, um, but some th actions that could happen is having a regular report or a dashboard that is just for this purpose that staff could provide updates to the IPRTF maybe twice a year um, or ideally once a quarter or some sort of, you know, and I think Kayla, you did a really great initial report on that. And so is there is there something like that that could just we know, so Jill has it on a quarterly agenda for us, we get a or a biannual agenda, we get this implementation plan update. Um, and we could also facilitate a structured conversation regarding progress and ask staff to share pain point successes in areas where our feedback and support can be helpful on that implementation plan. So like honoring the different lanes and different, um, you know, roles and job descriptions, but wanting to be helpful in the ways that we can as task force. And then research, I think I'm on the right page, research best practices and bring forward innovative ideas. That's a That was some clear feedback as well that the IPRTF, yes, we have this implementation plan, that's great. And we're also a generative body of what's next and what else is out there. And so a next step could be developing process for elevating opportunities to learn about national best practices. For example, when the IPRTF members or committee leadership would like to investigate a topic or find articles of interest, they could send it to Jill, Peter, Heather, and Barry, for example, to ensure it lands on an appropriate agenda as a learning opportunity and that there's sort of a, a uh, an organized way for us all to be learning together instead of a scattershot way. Um, and then we could ask focus of committee chairs to find and elevate national best practice, after which Possibly a work group could be assigned, staff time could be dedicated to vetting results from this work. Um, I think, Peter, that was maybe one that you had written, and I don't remember quite some of the details around that, but I think it's aligned with just having some organization around um, those learning opportunities. What would you add, Peter, on that one? Well, I, I think it's kind of a larger point, and I just want to emphasize that um, a lot of this is in coordination with the executive's office and with with staff. And so that we're, um, you know, we on the committees uh, are often reading, uh, uh, looking at what other jurisdictions are doing, looking for best practices and such. And I, I want to encourage us to continue that. That is certainly something that we, um, that uh, is in our purview. Um, but it is not to say that we're, because we find best practices, uh, we're demanding that the staff at the health department, for instance, um, 
adhere to these best practices, but there will be a need to have a conversation with the executive's office, with, with staff around best practices. So I just, and that's true of a lot of these things. And we, uh, we don't want to be out of our lane, but there will need to be collaboration. So just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. I'm going to keep going down this, down page five, and then I'll pause. Um, we also heard feedback about wanting to focus on the behavioral care center research and development. And so one of the next steps could be that we ensure that learnings from the site visits across the nation are shared with IPRTF. And we could invite the health department and decision makers regarding planning for behavioral care center to that meeting so that there's just like a, a place for that deep, that connection of learning and information. Um, and then mine for key questions and opportunities to help shape the proposal or the space or wherever we can weigh in appropriately. Um, identify funding opportunities. That was some feedback uh, from a few different places that we could be helpful. Um, and we could ask IPRTF members to forward any funding opportunities they discover um, for exploration of appropriate fit for Whatcom County, and then also provide regular updates as needed on opportunities. And focus on reentry and Medicaid benefits for incarcerated individuals. Um, so there's some specific recommendations around we could establish relationships with um, some of the local colleges to do some workforce um, and other uh, improvements of educational and employment opportunities for justice related individuals explore that right and recruit appropriate representation or participation from those organizations for relevant meetings. Um, we could bring Father Gregory Boyle or a representative of theirs to an IPRTF meeting for some learning. And we could also ask for regular updates from the Sheriff's Office regarding the new reentry healthcare authority contract. Not an exhaustive list. There's a lot more things to do around reentry, of course, but that those are some initial possibilities. I'll pause before going down the rest of the list to hear any questions, additions, edits, feedback concerns. I do want to recognize that hearing. this is not always the best forum for some people. They don't, uh, they need more time. And I would encourage you to reach out to, um, to us with your, your feedback after this meeting. So if now is not the best time for you to do that, um, but please do it as soon as you can so we can get um, rolled into this work. Good. Barry? Yeah, I just wanted to one make one quick comment, and that is about how I'm so in favor of making such a priority out of the SIM and the updates. I think that's super important. That's our roadmap. Uh, so kudos for that. I, I think that's an important thing. I noticed you listed it first, so. Great, thanks. Bertie? Okay, Barry, you took the words right out of my mouth because that's exactly what I was gonna say. So I think the SIMS is a incredibly valuable tool that helps guide us. And um, I'm very supportive of an update. Right. Birdie, thanks, Barry. I put a plus one next to it. <laughs> um, part two on the back side of the re-entry recommendations too. Um, there are a couple more we added. We could ask for a presentation from the Medicaid Transformation Project uh, regarding program and outcomes. They're really focused on re-entry as well right now with the local accountable community of health. Um, and then I also think bringing learnings from the reentry simulation to IPRTF or asking for a presentation from Up From Slavery. They're the ones who facilitated that program um, to help IPRTF members understand barriers to reentry. 
I'm going to keep going on the findings here too. So focus on addressing workforce shortages. That's across the board. That isn't just behavioral health, right? And so um, broadening partners around that work um, to investigate increasing workforce for justice involved individuals and supporting policies and funding requests to state and federal government regarding strengthening local workforce. Again, not exhaustive. There's probably 30 more action items we could do. Um, and then focus on building data systems to monitor, measure, and inform. Um, so we said based on top level information being requested, recommend to county council and department leadership a focus on five to 10 key data points for regular updates and monitoring at IPRTF. I think that there's a lot, I think there might be a few conversations that need to come together around that with different work streams. Um, and what would ex what would an external data, like maybe those five to 10 key data points are actually just the external data that IPRTF pauses and looks at twice a year or once a quarter or something, so. Um, focusing on upstream solutions has been something that some people have wanted to focus uh, or to, to bring into the conversation. And um, so we thought we could maybe host an annual joint meeting with the Child and Family Wellbeing Task Force to discuss aligned policy opportunities. Um, we could ensure regular education and awareness about prevention investments that IPRTF can support with advocacy. Um, we could ask for regular reports from the juvenile justice departments and re related organizations and services. Um, that's actually an area we haven't done a lot in with the ju and and could do a lot more. And then the last finding before Raylene, we go to you is um, focus on current and new diversion efforts. And I think some of these actions have been accomplished, but kind of putting it in a clean space, listing out the current diversion prog pro programs and calendaring out a process of receiving updates could be something we do. Um, and then co-chairs and interested IPRTF members could also scan for new diversion efforts and bring to IPRTF legal subcommittee for further review and refined recommendations. Mm -hmm. Raylene, were you gonna add right. something? Oh, and I see Birdie unmuted too. No. Raylene, go ahead. Wait, where did she go? You can you can pass me. I'll I'll bring it to another meeting. It's fine. It's all good. Okay, great. Bertie, did you have something to add? Nope. Okay. That is a lot of good content. Um, I, I want to uh, restate what Peter said. If you have more thoughts after, get them soon. And also, I think it seems pretty obvious there's going to have to be pr some prioritization here that's going to have to happen, right? And sequencing. Because that's, that's a really great, juicy list. Okay, we good? Should we move on to the last section? All right. Yes. So the last section is more around structural or process or just core function of IPRTF. Um, so we have a highlight, an opportunity of determined funding and budgeting for IPRTF. So we said, let's work with Barry and Jill to understand budget needs and make appropriate request. Um, meeting structure, timing, and culture changes needed was another bucket of feedback, um, and we thought maybe co-chairs could work to develop a template for a one-pager, but we could start there, to support agenda items and summary information that could help with um, when presentations come, having a standardized, like, here's why this is coming, here's the top three takeaways, and help help people understand and integrate, like why would we be talking about 988 and how is it connected to the IPRTF scope and goals? Um, and then revisit charters, set goals, track progress. Um, so we thought we could ask each committee and IPRTF as a whole to read through charters together, ask for two or three committee members potentially to form a work group to come back with any recommended updates. Um, I think there is a recognition that these charters probably need to be looked at and refreshed. And I think that Barry might be working on something aligned with that too already. So um, just a good time to look and say, is this still the relevant scope of this committee generally? 
and, and Heather, then, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Heather, one thing on this, um, uh, Marty pointed out before the meeting began that um, somehow we didn't quite get this into the um, this section here, but uh, it is elsewhere, certainly, um, that is kind of reforming um, some committees, possibly, like uh, with Perry leaving us, unfortunately, uh, his uh, committee, which has been focused on the uh, crisis stabilization uh, center really could become either a facilities committee or could be rolled into the IPRTF. And I do believe that we need to have a uh, good uh, discussion about that in this group, not today, but another day. And there might be other changes that um, some of the other committees, upon reflection, upon reading, rereading their charter and such, uh, might need to uh, might need to make and then and of course there are uh work groups that can be formed as well so now is the time to be thinking about those things perfect thank you last two last two themes um sharpen focus make recommendations take action there was some feedback about just wanting us to be more action oriented generally and the action item corresponding to that is what we're in the middle of doing already, reviewing priority areas of focus and building consensus for our work plan. I think that's a pretty foundational place of, of where to start. Um, and then the last bucket is increase inclusion and representation of frontline staff and people with lived experience. Um, that was a really big point of feedback as well and some action items associated could be we need to continue to create a culture of welcoming and onboarding for new IPRTF members um, and, and ensure agenda items are at an appropriate level for all members to weigh in on. Great. The end. Woo. Okay, we're going to hear comments on this whole last section. So what we we've got the flag to go ahead and add in reorganizing update committees if needed. What else? Any other questions or comments or changes? People have on this. Yeah, Barry. Only that uh, what Heather mentioned that that uh, Jill and I are working on is we're working on uh, uh, refreshing the ordinance that established the IPTRF to begin with. And we're working with the co-chairs. And I think this plan is going to help a lot for us to to think about, you know, some of those high level things that need to go in that ordinance. So um, it, it's timely right now because Jill and I are got our heads into this right now. So. Um, just wanted to make sure you knew kind of what, what was going on in the council side of things. Fantastic. Okay, good. So I'm hearing general, first of all, appreciation. Let's give a moment of appreciation for Peter and Heather for such really intense work, really methodical and really brought it together so beautifully and making these linkages we got some really clear feedback here today. I'm um, a request from Peter that if you have more, please contact him right away. So, or you know him and Heather, so they can uh, add that in addition, additionally to what we'll be adding today from our notes. So, I guess my question is: Is there any cons major concerns that we have at this point um, that that we should know about? Because this is kind of a foundation of the direction of leadership for the IPRTF. So any major hesitations with uh, with just supporting this in general? No, oh, yeah, Perry? Um, you know, maybe this is just me not following the bouncing ball very well, um, but just okay. a question really from kind of my perspective, and that is, you know, particularly because uh, I've been a part of it, um, the Behavioral Health Subcommittee. Um, it, it always has felt to me during my work with Whatcom County that it's like, boy, it feels like almost all roads lead to behavioral health in, in one way, shape or form. Um, so obviously, you know, really significant committee. Um, and it made reference to it. So I'm, I'm just really checking for my understanding here. It made reference to it in the document that we went through. But when I hear that we need to be action oriented as subcommittees, um, 
part of what happens for me is, well, there's a lot of um, pretty dialed in folks, for example, in the behavioral health subcommittee to conceivably do research on uh, behavioral care centers, best practices of that, literally the subcommittee itself doing some of that work, if not maybe, you know, that entire project. But at times I also hear, and it makes sense to me, but it, I see here reference to, well, county staff and the almost expectation or sort of um, direction of, well, so which county staff can we have do this work um, kind of separation? if that's making sense. And I think that there's something that's lost there by subcommittee members not rolling up their sleeves a bit more and saying, I'll gather this information. It doesn't make me a subject matter expert. But for example, when we talk about it, I think it's a great idea, um, individuals that are uh, you know, doing the work, um, you know, et cetera, coming in and, and sharing and so forth to be a great, you know, uh, information and then feedback of, you know, you're, you've you been doing this work. What do you think about this best practice? Is that what's happening, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, the question that I really have is, is that the description of action, when we use that word action within the committees, um, and obviously not exclusively because all of the work couldn't be done there, um, but I look at my colleagues right now, and I certainly can't speak to this for, you know, health department or whatever, that um, their plates are very full, um, you know, at this point to, if it were, and hey, we want you to do these reports, or we want you to do, you know, to do this footwork, um, that it wouldn't get the prioritization that it needs. So again, forgive me if not understanding fully, but that was really the question or the clarification that would be helpful for me. Thanks, Perry. So that, that real question of when we say action, what does that mean? And how does it interface with, with staff? So we have people who are working in these agencies on these committees, but also there's whole worlds that are in action, in motion, and not wanting to, wanting to complement, but not belabor everybody who's who's doing that work so could you Peter... and i think i think heather captured it when she said that that we want to be helpful to staff we want to be helpful to the the departments and i guess you know we have to figure out what does that look like yeah peter um oh i'm glad to see dan's hand go up because i really wanted to hear from him on this point particularly since this is a uh uh, committee that he leads, and I know that in, through many conversations um, that action is important. And uh, but I just want to say to Perry that this has been an area I think one of the most difficult areas for me in being on this committee and trying to figure out what that um, what that relationship is all about. For instance, you know darn well that I came to you maybe six months ago with a best practice document that you were already familiar with, and. Uh, around crisis, um, crisis systems. And I've got a lot of thoughts on that. And I know that uh, other members of the committee do too, but you guys have your plate so full, I'm not sure we can get a good conversation going. And so air traffic control around who's doing what and how we can be helpful, because we do have time and energy and um, uh, everything it takes on these committees to do some good policy work and some good thinking about this, but nor do we want to get you tripped up and nor do we want to reach out to you outside of uh, proper protocols. So it is a sticky and thorny issue. I'm just going to recognize that. Thank you. Dan? Um, yeah, everything that Peter just said. Yes, 100%. Um, and that's the... At, at the top of the hour, um, the, re the remarks that I made earlier in terms of delineation, like who does what and what are what's our role, that th these questions have to be asked and answered uh, when it comes to, you know, do we just, are we solely uh, policy recommendation um, people or do we, do we uh, try to figure out what programs we can start? Do we 
do we pull in programs uh, or ideas from outside from other communities things like that so i think that that conversation really needs to have some some guardrails uh put around it and to i, I think to answer um perry's question and perhaps peter's um so stephen gockley and i have been um holding a, um, a series of um coffee meetings with our membership to basically kind of one-on-one -on -one work with the members to um to 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 see if we have champions for for different ideas and that was based on a recommendation from jill who said that the, the greatest work that has come out of the committees has come from champions who have picked up a cause and gone for it and and we've, we we have all the examples we we know what that looks like um in conversation with um, Melora what uh Stephen and I and, and Melora had talked about was you know how can we be of assistance to to the health department and we we don't want to step on any toes we want to make sure that we're with within our lane and what she had brought up and I don't want to speak for her but this is my interpretation of what she said was that um you know we the health department looks at the the task force as sort of a think tank and can help um provide some recommendations on on policy for a very overworked staff uh to to, to help and be of assistance and that's where i want to be as a behavioral health um uh co-chair is um in that in that role of of helping make the broader systems even better than than they are and knowing full well that we've got a lot of work to accomplish and i hope that provides some kind of I don't know, guidance or, um, um, you know, thinking, you know, into, into the future. So thanks. I'll stop there. Right. Thanks, Dan. Heather. Um, I wanted to answer Perry too, about refining action and what comes to mind for me is when we look back on the work in a year, what will we be able to say we accomplished and kind of for the sake of what? Um, and so, you know, action could be that research and best practice and learning and partnership. It could be that there is the champion that is like, I am going to build this urgent care for behavioral health and I am going to like run with it. And, um, and I would say that in addition to the, like for the sake of what, what were all these meetings for? What were the conversations about? How can we also keep them in alignment so that the committees, it's not just, it's not like four different task forces working independently, but that there's subcommittees supporting agreed upon goals of the entire task force body. And so not to like, not to limit any energy or passion, but to align it and and have it just transparently clear that these are the six things we're going to be working on and here's what behavioral health committee members want to advance and move forward now staff knows that and there's clarity and then there can be those conversations about okay here's what's actually helpful then if we want to do this you know we need a grant writer we need a whatever we need or staff can't do that, but here's the blessing for you to move forward and have all the meetings you need to have and plug us in at this point or whatever it is, right? So. Right, super, that was helpful. Really? Thank you. As we're looking forward at data and roadblocks and areas that have kind of been touched on already, but the um, data portion that had a roadblock in it before and I believe Mike Hilly and myself and Caleb Erickson worked on it is we were trying to merge the behavioral health issues along with the criminal justice data and some people don't have access to that criminal justice because of privacy rules and so they have to be already integrated in that system to pull and extract that data just as well as somebody that's in the criminal justice may not have the same access that somebody has to protect the HIPAA privacy and because those two worlds are so intertwined having somebody from the county that's very specific on data has to be able to work with individuals that, that have those legal rights and access to still protect the privacy of the individuals. And that's going to be a constant struggle because of all the different silos. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I have two comments now on, on um, Raylene's comment. I think that is a particular role for as we work on data. There are places that have successfully developed um, ways around those very typical issues. And I think we can look to them and make that one of our priorities of how we can integrate the data. Uh, so that's, I agree with you, Raylene, but the larger comment that I raised my hand for, we talk about changing culture and we're talking about changing culture within the IPRTF and other places. I think one of the cultural changes that would be helpful for us to work on, if I were in the exec office, it might be um, more negative than positive emotions with a lot of volunteerism going out and launching off with enthusiasm in multiple directions. And I think at the same time, there's a tremendous reservoir of talent and energy within the IPRTF and its subcommittees. So perhaps one of the uh, culture issues that we can deliberately work on is creating a culture for those are not, um, don't generate conflict, but more mutual benefit, because we could become really good partners if the folks that are tasked with the responsibility and doing the work can trust what the volunteerism of the IPRTF system is doing not to step on toes and not to um, make their life more difficult. And that means open conversations about it so that the people within exec are comfortable saying, wait a sec, you're going too far, I'm uncomfortable with this, da 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 da, da. or yes, that would be really helpful. And I just wanna label this as a, as a subject so that we can have these potentially difficult conversations and learn to work together so we can tap into all the resources that are out there um, that could really help our overworked county council and executive department. Thanks, Rudy. Okay, Kayla, I think we're going full circle back to your first comment when we were talking about this plan. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> listening to what everyone's saying and, and the global remarks and, and particularly Bertie's last comment, like I, I've been trying to sort of distill what is most helpful and sort of re reduces this tension between sort of like the give and take or the lanes and, and how we best focus. And I think what it comes down to, to really is like, I think if there were fewer things we felt like the IPRTF was working on, it would help. It would one thing for us to feel like we have to be at, which is like one of the main tension points. Mm -hmm. for us. Feel like we have to be everywhere all the time. And like, I'm spending, I feel like probably as a staff team, we're spending more time on IPRTF meetings than like actually the work to implement the implementation. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I think fewer meetings overall. Mm -hmm. And I think the clearly defined lanes and focus mm -hmm. make us feel like Oh, we know we don't have to be at this this meeting of this subcommittee because like mm -hmm. they're going to be talking about something that mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. but like they should go talk to the prosecutor and Raylene and do their thing. But like we don't need the whole health department staff there. And so mm -hmm. I think we really clear delineations around what the different subcommittees mm -hmm. are on will be a pretty big like release for us because I think right now it's like every time an IPRTF mm -hmm. scheduled, we're like scrambling like, oh, who can be there? It looks like this thing's on the agenda and that relates to our work. Um, and then the other thing is like, it feels like I can't sort of double down enough on how helpful it would be to have some policy recommendations on the behavioral care center. Mm -hmm. it really is this area where there's this huge opportunity for impact and there's so much crossover between the behavioral health system and the mm -hmm. reform side. And like, there's so much research and programmatic development work that mm -hmm. needs to that's something that IPRTF could dig in on and it would have a lot of added value and is so squarely within the mission. Um, and then 
I think like the data stuff, right? Like we're all circling around that and it feels really relevant. Um, and then on the advocacy criminal justice policy side. And I think it's like, we have so much need across the continuum of services on the behavioral health side and so much need and opportunity on like re-entry and criminal justice system reform. But it's like, I think there's just this need to prioritize towards like one or two or three really key things that the IPRTF is working on. Um, Cause it, 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 and I, I think that will advance progress and sort of um, make, make the engagement feel really productive from our side because those are things like we know we need to get these things done to deliver on the implementation plan um so so that's just sort of my two cents is like there's so much need and it's so hard to say like no we are not going to work on secure detox right now or we're not going to have this conversation continue on but like we don't have enough resource to do much beyond what's in our implementation plan so i don't i think sort of yeah, how do we focus the energy around prosecutorial diversion around these things that we've committed to but haven't yet taken the next step on? Yeah, I hear you. And I, I think that it seems like that really matches with the intention that that Peter and Heather are bringing to this. Like, how do we get focused? How do we prioritize? How do we then have good systems so that we can be being, so that we can be effective? So, um, what I'd like to do, Dan, I see your hands up. Um, I think Peter and Heather, it'd be good if you kind of wrapped us up. I don't know why balloons happen when I facilitate. Did you all see my balloons? I don't know why. But I also just want to point out before we shift that we've got uh, a couple more things on our agenda, right? So we have, uh, oh, let's see here. Is this it? If I'm on the right screen. Uh, do you see the agenda where we are, guys? Yeah, okay, we so need we to uh, cover five and six. Yeah, okay, and that so it's like. and two two twenty two two twenty nine is a hard stop because we got another meeting at two thirty, right? So, okay, so, um, Dan, do, do you have? Can you hold your comment, or do you want to say it real quick? Um, I I can wait. Go ahead. So, Peter and Heather, do you want to wrap bring us home here, and then we'll go to the rest mm -hmm. of our agenda. Sure, I'd like to. Uh, I would like to hear from Dan first, and then get to it. So, Dan, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, I just a, a couple of just brief, very brief things. I think that we need to consider. One is that the the legislative agenda um, for the county and the city. We we don't share the same lobbyist anymore. So we have we have gone different directions. We, was, we used to have a um, relationship with the port and the county and the city, and that's that's no longer. So I think that that needs to be under under, under consideration for any. Um, state level or federal level um, lobbying that this task force wants to pursue. Um, the other pieces are there was, I think it was Heather that brought up the um, juvenile uh, justice piece and um, upstream prevention. We, we have talked about this a lot. And I think that we need to have just further definition on what we're able to do because our charge is uh, adult um, folks within the system. It's not juveniles, but but I think that there's a there's a key that we're missing there and then the other piece is that to some extent we have a roadmap um, that's already been laid out for us and that is the um the the justice center that's uh going in uh on the bounty and then all the things that are going to be leading up to that uh at the division street property so we have to i think to, to earlier points that were made when it comes to a um, behavioral health a crisis care center Yes, we should be chiming in on what a trauma informed design looks like. What does that what does that mean for the patients that are going to be served there? So th there's a whole body of work that can be that can be and should be conducted uh, um, by the behavioral health task force, but or the subcommittee, but also in conjunction with legal and justice systems that we can that we can then roll upstream to this committee and then to the broader task force when it comes to um, all the all the good work that's going to be happening uh, over the next couple of years. I'll stop there. Thanks. Okay, thanks. And um, so uh, item number four, what is missing from findings and recommendations? We've been going through that, but again, I encourage you to um, think about this and take a week, 
and uh, send us something if um, if you if you think of it. Number five, how can committee work align to achieve the goals? This is for the uh, co-chairs in particular to be thinking about now. And in the next IPRTF meeting, we will hopefully be finishing up our um, the work that we were doing in the last meeting around um, around responsibilities and who's you know uh, as far as staff go, as far as agencies go, as far as our committees go, and then. I think it's time for the next meeting, uh, the next IPRTF meeting to uh, focus on priorities. And that's where the rubber's really going to hit the road and we can have some good, hard conversations and um, and focus on those and then lay out in the next meeting, um, do the work in advance of the November meeting and finalize and approve our 18 month uh, work plan for the IPRTF and its and its subcommittees. That's my proposal. Awesome. Any thoughts? Okay. Sounds like it sounds like you've got a plan. It sounded really it sounded really clear. So we've got nine minutes, eight minutes, and can and so uh, who's going to pick up these next parts? The legislative agenda for twenty twenty five. Is that you, Barry? Well, I'll take it back. I'll take the gavel back and uh, just ask Kayla if she has anything that she wants to talk about with the legislative agenda. Uh, no, we have a we have a new lobbyist. So that is ex an exciting development. The council approved his contract last night. Jeff Weiss with Gordon Thomas Honeywell, a long um, sort of county history for him and excited to have his expertise. Um, you know, we're going to be working over the next several months to develop our behavioral health and broader legislative agenda. The BHASO is holding a behavioral health advocacy legislative agenda forum. So I think we're really going to use that opportunity to see what the other counties in our region are doing. Um, I think we're focused in sort of on Medicaid operational costs for facilities, um, different types of billing models, adequate billing models. Um, we've been talking a lot about higher level, like sort of step up from PSH housing, um, recovery housing, as well as um, like capital funding for behavioral health facilities that's flexible to counties. Um, those are sort of internal thoughts within the exec's office pair. I don't know. I know we're going to have some staff meetings prior to that BHA so legislative forum, but do you have anything to add there? Uh, I think you covered it well, Kayla. I, I'm excited that that we're uh, we're coordinating with the the uh, ASO. That's that's really good. And Perry, uh, anything else from Response Division that you feel like I missed? Are you inquiring of me, uh, Kayla? Just clarifying. It's breaking up just a little bit. Um, no, I think that uh, uh, it's absolutely accurate that we work so closely with the ASO um, and, uh, you know, just in terms of legislative uh, uh, agendas and, and priorities. Um, and I would tend to agree in terms of, you know, some of the opportunities, I hope, um, for individuals that are, you know, currently incarcerated in the jail that have, um, uh, will still have Medicaid, you know, coverage and some of the relief that that would um, occur. That's really been on my mind, particularly working with the Crisis Stabilization Center, because honestly, they're, they're barely covering costs. If that, I think that they're actually using funds from other contracts that they have oftentimes to actually cover costs of providing the services that they're doing out there um, at this point. So thanks for asking. Okay, so that covers that. We'll be uh, hearing more in the future. Um, as far as the Justice Project implementation, oh, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I was just going to note that I was asked uh, quite some time to go uh, go for this topic, the legislative agenda, to be on the task force and steering committee agendas every year in preparation for the upcoming legislative session. How would you like to move this forward? Should this be scheduled at the next task force? Should it go to committees? Or should we just wait for Kayla to uh, come forward with what the exec's office is proposing for next year? 
Well, what do you do? You have a, any kind of a feel for the timing, Kayla, of when when will I know council's going to want to weigh in as well? I mean, I think yeah, like we'll be discussing with council. We'll be discussing with the health department if the IPRCF has recommendations that they'd like the council and the executive to consider. I would say just send those our way. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, that's I, that's what I I would say. I think with all of our boards and committees, we'll sort of be letting them know, like, this is the time of year. If you have things you want added, let us know. So I guess to answer your question, maybe, Jill, we leave it on the agenda so there's a space for it. And then we can uh, check in with Kayla maybe a week before and find out, you know, if she's got something significant that she wants to report or not. Great. Thank you. Um, justice implementation plan. Uh, J-POP, that's really the big thing on, on the horizon right now. And that's going to start, when's our first meeting? Next month, right, Holly? Mm -hmm. October yep, 17th. October. Say that again? October 17th. 17th, okay. So uh, we're off and running. Um, Jill, we're, we're pretty much there on appointments, but but what do we have left to do? We have three vacancies. Uh, one is scheduled for council appointment at its next meeting. I'm anticipating an application for another position. And so really that leaves the youth uh, young adult position vacant. And uh, I think Marty and Holly are gonna be reaching out to some folks. I sent an email to Jason McGill asking um, for his recommendations or ideas he might have for filling that position. I haven't heard back from him. Um, that's it. Okay. Um, items for upcoming task force agendas. Uh, I think we have pretty full agenda next month. It sounds like. Uh, Jill, do you are you looking? Or I guess it would be this month. I guess wouldn't it? Uh, Kayla. Oh, sorry, not an item. It was like a separate other new business thing. So I'm gonna let you go. I'm just get my camera. Jill, how how full are we? Are we pretty? I think we're full. I I do too. Um, so any, anybody got anything kind of in their mind for the future that they want to start, you know, getting in front of us? Okay. Well, we'll continue that discussion. Obviously, every steering committee meeting, we'll be talking about future agenda items. That's it for us. Uh, we've got two minutes to spare. And uh, most of you are going to hop over onto the planning team meeting. So we'll see you over there in, in a couple couple minutes. Before we adjourn, we do have one attendee. I want to give space for public comment. If you'd like to speak to the steering committee, please virtually raise your hands now. I don't see any hands raised, and I don't see anyone in our conference room. Thank you. Thank you for that, Jill. I didn't turn my page over. <laughs> All right, uh, we are adjourned. Take care, everyone.